And we had another dream, one that seemed a bit unrealistic, that one day we'd see a pro-life woman running on a national ticket for president or vice president of the United States. And thanks to our guest speaker today, that far-fetched dream became a reality in 2008. When Sarah Palin was nominated for vice president, we were overwhelmed with excitement from our members. Within weeks, we had 77,000 new recruits who joined our Team Sarah project to work to help elect Senator McCain and Governor Palin. Most importantly, we had a champion on the national stage whose passion for and commitment to our cause of life gave incredible momentum to this cause. What makes Governor Palin so important to the cause of life and to so many other issues is her character and courage. The mainstream media and the left have taken their best shots month after month to bring her down. No attack was too cheap, no topic too personal, no family member too young or vulnerable to be spared. Had any of these assaults been leveled against the average politician, they would have buckled. Some would have begun trimming and hedging and compromising their positions, but not Sarah Palin. Others, especially those on the left, would have cried foul and had the entire mainstream media demanding apologies, calling for resignations, threatening sponsors of cable news networks, or whatever else it took to stop the onslaught. But not Sarah Palin. Sarah Palin is not the typical politician. She is a woman of courage and character. She took all their attacks and never changed her views on an issue. Instead, she stood up to her adversaries and said, bring it on. Governor Sarah Palin, more than any single figure on the national stage today, has proven what toughness and conviction is all about. Toughness and conviction is not pushing through an unpopular health care bill that will fund abortions, when all the moneyed interest groups and national press corps are on your side. Toughness and conviction is not spending our grandchildren's legacy to bankroll favored industries and friends with government handouts in the name of economic growth. Toughness and conviction is not launching round after round of talks and negotiations when adversaries are building nuclear arsenals designed to threaten America's security. Toughness and conviction is withstanding the unrelenting attacks of the mainstream media, the left-wing interest groups, the late-night comics, the Democrat establishment and the President of the United States, and holding one's ground, continuing to fight for one's principles, and not backing down one inch. And that is what Sarah Palin has done in the battle for life and the battle to protect the economic and national security of the United States of America. And that's why so many Americans love Sarah Palin. And we in the pro-life community especially admire Sarah Palin. We do so because of her unequivocal commitment to pro-life policies. We do so because of her willingness to help pro-life causes across America. And we do so because she has shown in her own experience that every human life is beautiful and special and deserving of the protection that we are fighting to provide. Over the next few years, the future of the pro-life movement will be deeply shaped by who wins and who loses some extremely critical elections. Those campaigns will determine who sits in the White House, who controls Congress, and most importantly, who fills the swing votes on the Supreme Court. For us to prevail, it is essential we have the support and manpower to wage the kind of aggressive campaign needed to overcome the advantages the pro-abortion side enjoys. And thanks to the help of Sarah Palin today, we will have more of those resources and support as we go forward. One final point. As many of you know, my husband and I have been in the political arena for 30 years fighting for life and other issues of importance to us. We know more than most what it's like to be part of these battles and what it means to families and friendships and futures. And I just want to finish my introduction today by thanking Governor Palin and her family for being willing to do what they have done for these causes we care so much about. 
You have given all of us more courage to keep fighting. <clears throat> you have set an incredible example for people like my twin 16-year-old daughters who need to see strong role models like you fight for what is right. And you have proven that in a profession that is all too often judged by who is up and who's down, not who's right and who's wrong, there remains a place for people of faith and fortitude to stand tall and lead America in the right direction. And we know you will keep leading these efforts as we enter this crucial point in America's experience. For all of this, I just want to offer my sincerest thanks to you, Governor Palin. Thanks for what you've done. Thank you for being here to help us today. And thank you for what I know will be your unrelenting commitment to the struggle ahead. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our guest speaker, Governor Sarah Palin. that warm welcome. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you. God bless you. Oh, I appreciate so much that warm welcome. Thank you all. It is great to be here. Good morning, sisters, and I see some brothers out there, too. Glad you, glad you made it. First, I'd like to thank Jane and Marjorie for their wonderful work and for their boldness, their courage. They're not backing down when they take heat. Sometimes uh, I know that if my name's associated with something, you take a little bit of extra heat. I, I appreciate so much that you, you take it anyway. And thank you, Emily Buchanan, for all of your hard work with this organization. And um, Marie, the most beautiful song. That was gorgeous. Thank you so much for your talent sharing that. And then the founders and... Uh, the members of Team Sarah who are here, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you, and I would ask that you would stand up so that I can put some faces out there to, to names, and I thank you so much. Thank you. Ooh, talk about courage and boldness, you all. Thank you for the great work that you did in, in 08 during the campaign, and uh, since then, even, continuing to support and advocate for good common sense solutions and helping me get the message out there. I appreciate you so much. Um, you know what I would always like to do when I'm in any kind of group is acknowledge those who allow us to be here free and secure, the members of our United States military. I know we have a lot of spouses of military members and moms of military members and, and daughters too. Those of you who are serving today in uniform or perhaps have served in the past, our veterans, you are who we want to thank and salute. And I would ask that members of our military, past or present, if you would stand up, we're going to thank you, salute you, say God bless you. are men and women in uniform who are a force for good throughout this world, and there is nothing to apologize for that. God bless you, veterans. Thank you. And we do have these good candidates. I know that they have been listed today, but Robin Smith and Pam Bondi and Jane Norton and Kelly Ayotte, so happy that you are here today and that you are bold and that you're standing up for what is right and um, you're putting it all on the line too and, and I thank you for the courage that you're showing in running for office. Uh, this afternoon I'll be with Nikki Haley in South Carolina doing an endorsement there and, and um, of course Carly Fiorina. Um, it was, it, you know, the credibility there that SBA allows a candidate to have knowing that, oh, okay, I'm safe there endorsing Carly Fiorina. You all have endorsed her. You all get it. You understand that there in deep blue California, anyone who's running for office bold enough to declare their pro-life stands or pro-NRA, their pro-business uh, and development and anti-tax, anti-big government um, principles that they stand on. Here, she proudly proclaiming that, and yet some wanting to accuse her of kind of being a rhino, I say, no, 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 they're in the deep blue California. If she's unabashedly pro-life and all those other 
common sense conservative things that she stands for. She's the real deal. And I appreciate you too being bold enough and strong enough to take a stand in that race and to take a stand in so many of these races across the country. Um, I'm especially glad to be here celebrating life and doing it under the banner of one of my heroes, Susan B. Anthony. It's an honor to speak in the building named after another one of my heroes and many of yours, Ronald Reagan. This is an honor. <laughs> President Reagan, of course, was always so supportive of women leadership. In fact, he often liked to tell a story about his good friend and another heroine, Margaret Thatcher. 